Good morning, yeah. everybody. My name is Reverend Janet Nohavik. I'm pastor of The Journey Within. Lovely to be with you all here this morning. Uh, joining me this morning is Minister Simone Key. I'll be introducing her in a little bit after we go into the healing moments. Um, so welcome, everyone. Uh, we do begin our services with spiritual healing. If you were here in person in the church, it's a laying on of hands and silent prayer. Our healers are here with us uh, this morning. So if you want to participate in the healing portion, just kind of close your eyes and go into the quiet, focus on your breathing and, you know, strengthening your own immune system, igniting the inner healer within you. Um, if there's someone you'd like to request healing for, please put their names in the chat box. First initials, last initial, no last names for confidentiality. If there's anyone during the course of the week you'd like to request healing for, including pets, you can email the church or call the church. We'll get those names across to Reverend Patty, who moves those along to the healers, um, who, whose service we're deeply grateful for. So I'll just begin with prayer, and then we'll go into our healing moment. Infinite and gracious God, as we draw together in community this morning, we pray for healing for a beautiful planet, for places all around our planet this morning where there is discord or war, where there is lack and need and suffering. We pray individually those for those you are requesting prayers for, whether that be emotionally, physically, mentally, or spiritually. We pray for those who are suffering this morning, whether they be in hospitals, nursing homes, or at home. And we, of course, pray during this time of COVID to find a way forward and to hopefully put this behind us all. We pray as well, dear God, that into our hearts and our minds, in a way of body, mind, and spirit, we find a way to tend the garden of the soul. And we lay all of these prayers at the footstool of the great spirit. Amen. As we come to the end of our healing moments, we continue to send absentee healing to all of those in need of prayers this morning. Amen. Thank you to our healers as well. Um, and please just continue to put the names in the chat box. Uh, Reverend Patty will be here through the service and we'll get those across to the healers. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Reverend Janet Nohavik, pastor of The Journey Within in Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. Joining me this morning is Minister Simone Key. Um, she's a certificate holder of the Spiritualist National Union. She is a minister of the Spiritualist National Union. She's a teacher. Um, a medium. Uh, she teaches at the pr prestigious Arthur Finley College, um, and she's been here to us in the United States. She's a very dear friend over the years. So welcome, Simone. We're so glad to have you with us today. Um, welcome to you, and um, good morning to, and good afternoon, and good evening to everybody, wherever you are. And it's really, really great to be here today with you. Thank you, Simone. So we would ask Simone to open with a prayer. Thank you. Please join with me. Divine Spirit, our God, we thank you for this time together in peace and in friendship. And as we join together as one, we cast away the trials of the day and unite in love to you, our God. As we bask in your light and in your glory, we know that each one here is in search of truth, in search of joy, upliftment and understanding. As we know in our hearts and our minds that we do not die and that life goes on for eternity. When we look at our world at this time, we often see the intolerances and injustices that occur every day. But if we take a moment with your guidance, we know that each individual is beautiful, that each view of nature brings us peace. Each item that is growing, every aspect of life 
has a spark of you within it. And when we look for the beauty within, we see our, our world with different eyes, eyes that can sparkle in the power of each other. We know we have a long way to go. And hopefully we look forward to a time when there is peace in our world, where there is no destruction or no injustice. And we know at this time that these things are here for us to deal with, with your help and guidance as always. We also know that today is a day of celebration where the worlds of spirit and matter unite, where there is no veil or separateness, but just a joining together of minds. And we invite those minds that join us from that world we call the spirit world to come close, giving us the benefit of their love, their light and their understanding. And we know we do all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we then move into a piece of music. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Minister Simone T for the address. I think you're muted, Simone. Thank you. <laughs> um, today, I'd like to share my thoughts with you about uh, the experience of spirit. And I know that we may all come from many different walks of life, different backgrounds, cultures, nationalities. But the one thing that brings us all together in unity is the experience of the spirit. When we find it, I believe it transforms us. It opens our minds to explore, helping us to see our place in the scheme of things and recognizing that we do have an immortal soul. But that experience stays with us for more than a lifetime. I, I know that when I'm touched by that power, that there is a change and there's a change within me. And that change brings about a feeling of belonging a feeling of harmony, a feeling of love, that that love that exists for me is there for eternity. When we, when we have a message from the spirit world and the medium brings us that information that proves how close those loved ones are to us, that, in, I believe, gives us some hope hope that we and knowledge that we will be together again but more so that those loved ones still know about us they're still involved in our lives and when we feel their closeness they're bringing to us their memories their life story of all that they were and what they are now one of my favorite parts of my job as a medium is to talk about someone in the spirit world who may be a loved one at one point, and yet they weren't particularly very nice when they were here. And they will tell me about themselves, maybe they were insufferable in some way, or they believed they were anyway. But what I love is being able to bring about how they are now, how they are since they've made that journey into the spirit world, where they've evolved. No, they haven't become saintly, they're not wearing wings or got a halo, but they have evolved. They've realized their mistakes. They've realized maybe how they should have behaved. And that's something that I love to show because it shows to me that we do progress. As our seventh principle says, eternal progress, open to every human soul. But that's only if we want to. And not necessarily when we're in the spirit world. I believe when that touch of the spirit touches our soul and we acknowledge it and we start to search for the deeper meaning of it, 
that's when we transform. That's when we open our mind and it, to explore what else does this mean? If I can't die, what does that mean? Where do I go? How do I know? And that evidence that we get from our loved ones through mediums or even on a personal level or just an inner knowing through our intuition, that will help us through. Sometimes as we've seen, and I'm not gonna talk about it, I promise, but the last couple of years through this pandemic has brought out the best and worst of humankind. But when we know that the spirit world is there joining us, trying to help us through those desperate moments that we've had or may be having, that we know there is so much more than it's just a loved one there. It's a loved one. They're loved ones who want to help us through their creative thinking, through their minds that show that maybe they've lost their body, but they've not lost anything else. They're still the same. Of course, some may have regrets that they weren't better people. And I'm sure we all recognize that sometimes because we all make mistakes. But I think it's good to know that that touch on our soul, that essence of the spirit is one that affects us in so many ways. It can help us with our mental health, our emotional health, our physical health. When we're able to feel the, the support of those loved ones in the spirit world and identify those minds, not necessarily as to who each one is, but the fact that those minds that are there, that's close to us, that help us and support us throughout our earthly life, they inspire us. They inspire us to change or to follow a direction or to help us remain on track when sometimes that can be one of the hardest things we have to do is to stay positive and strong and help other people who are not. It's all very well trying to act. You know, I know I'm a very good actress. I can act like I'm all right all the time. And I'm sure those of you listening do the same. But there are times when we know that those minds know actually how we feel without words. They know who we are without words. They know that we're suffering without telling them. And that's when we can rely on them. That's when we can include them in our lives and to help us move forward in our thinking. We know that tomorrow's another day and that life will get easier at some point when we're going through bad times. But in that moment, in that depths of despair, that's when we can appreciate the touch of the spirit the most. That's when we can feel their support, their encouragement that can uplift and enlighten us to help us cope with life. For me, the best message the spirit world gives us is always live life to the full. Don't be too eager to get to the spirit world. Live life. Those, uh, those connections that we have with people in our world, they affect us. They make us the people we are. Good and bad, they make us who we are. So when we get to the spirit world, I don't want to be the one that regrets that I didn't live my life, that regrets that I didn't extend a hand to someone or a few kind words. I know it's very easy for me to say, you know, you know, be kind to everybody. Of course it is when you're sitting on, a, you know, behind a laptop, you know, and you're in a, your little corner of the world. But when we realize the effect we have on each other and how much better we would feel if we were all very positive, if we all felt strong, even in our times of weakness, how we all feel when we're touched by the spirit, not just the discarnate world, 
that world in the spirit world, but by the incarnate world, you and me. When we're touched by each other, when those appreciative words come from another to you that says, you may not be talking to me very much, but I appreciate you. They mean so much to us all. And that touch of their spirit is equally as important as the touch of the spirit in discarnate. The experience of the spirit, when we sit and we ponder and we contemplate, and what does that mean to me? It means everything. Without you, without that touch of the spirit from our loved ones, where would we be? Who would we be? What would we know? That's scary. But I know that we each mean something to each other, that we've got, every one of us has got some good within each other. And that good can be felt. It can be experienced just as much as the spirit world's feelings too. And when we're in that power of the spirit, not just when we're working, not just when we're talking about the spirit world, but when we're relaxing and we just feel the presence in that moment, that's everything for me. Because that shows that we're living minds and those minds, they share their joy with us. They wanna to prove to us that they are still alive. They are still well, they're still healthy, they're still strong. And more important, that they're enjoying their lives too. So when we feel a little bit fed up, when we look at our world and think, mm, don't like a lot what's going on at the moment, always try to remember as I have to, that this isn't it. We've all got a long way to go. Our world has to evolve. It doesn't always look like it is, but it does. It has to evolve. And the spirit world is constantly telling me, live life to the full. Enjoy it. Don't just endure it. And the more we enjoy life, the more we can enjoy each other. And I'd like to leave you with that. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Simone, for those encouraging words these days. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we come to our time of announcements at this point. Um, there is a donation little box up there. If you would like to take a picture, it takes you straight to a donation place. Or if you'd like to mail in a check, if you're in a position to do that, that's great. Anything great or small is appreciated. We have also, uh, because of requests put together, that little membership box. Um, people have been joining now virtually to be members from around the world. So uh, we would appreciate anyone who would love to join the community and become a member of the Journey Within. Um, so that will take you to information about that. Uh, Wednesday night, this uh, tonight, there is a service at 6.30. It involves our student mediums uh, and ministers in training. Um, so please join us tonight at 6.30 every Sunday night, if you'd like to join us for that. This Wednesday night, which is traditionally our healing and message service, um, this week it's the beginning of autumn, so we'll be having the autumnal, autumnal equinox service, um, and uh, that's in place of it. We will have a little healing segment time in there, so if there's anyone you'd like to request healing for, we will certainly be there as a healing presence as well. There's a demonstration of mediumship next Saturday night for the schoolhouse, with myself, um, Laura Wooster, and Lori Sheridan. Uh, so please sign up for that. Lynn Probert has a course beginning next weekend, I believe. Chris Drew, Christine Morgan, Judah Seaman. Simone has classes coming to us in October. So please check out the events page at the church under the church website. Lots of courses coming up. Almost every night of the week, there's a class. Monday night, Reverend Anna is beginning again on the last Monday. Uh, with awareness, mediumship, and psychic development. Tuesday night is a beginner's uh, mediumship class and intermediate. Thursday night is a beginner's psychic and intermediate class. Um, Wednesday night is our healing service. Tuesday night, again, beginning is uh, the healer's gathering. And then on Wednesdays, midday at 2.30, there's a development class beginning 
kind of resuming after the summer break for people that are international. Um, that just gives them a different time of day for that. If you'd like to drop off any uh, food for the, the Kumak pantry, we just made a big delivery. Thank you, Ed Makira. We cleaned out everything here. Um, if there's anything you'd like to bring, anything that's not perishable or glass, if you're cleaning out your cupboards, please check the dates because uh, we don't want to give them things that are, you know, uh, should be just tossed. Um, so, but if you'd like to uh, bring some things, they're in always great need. So that goes to Kumak and Patterson. If you're in need, it's, if you're finding this a challenging time and would like to speak to a minister, you can call the church offices um, and we will put you in contact with one of us. Um, so uh, any way we can be of help. Um, if you're signing up for a course and having trouble, either didn't get the registration, please email Karen at info at journeywithin.org. Sometimes we're not in here on a certain day um, and the phone message you leave might not get to us. Um, uh, they'll always get to us, but if you're kind of in a frenzy to get in the class, definitely emailing is the best. I'd like to thank all of um, our healers, our volunteers, our techs, Reverend Patty, Reverend Karen. There's so many people that have helped us all keep moving through the pandemic. Uh, we are officially closed until April 1st, somewhere around March. We'll see how it's going. Um, but many offerings to keep the community uh, as the best we can on Zoom. Um, as a spiritualist church, we do believe uh, that life is continuous. And through our demonstration of mediumship, we come together um, in that way. We'll have a piece of music uh, before we move into the demonstration. Um, after the piece of music, if you can take 85, 90% of what has been said as uh, Simone begins to demonstrate, um, you could put up your little yellow blue hands. If a couple of people could put an example of putting their hands up, that'd be great. It's along the bottom, usually under reactions. Um, uh, if all else fails, you can type to me in the chat box. Please don't put your hand up unless you can take a great amount of what's been said. So if she says it's a mother, don't put up your hands thinking it's your father. Um, so the details are important. I have to say we don't go too far, I have to say, but a little leeway um, as well. Um, so uh, it's an important part of our service. So uh, I'll just be moving into a piece of music in between the homily and the demonstration. So we will now invite Simone in for the demonstration of mediumship. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, a lady has joined us and she tells me she's a mum and she wishes to speak to her daughter. And I know that this, uh, this mum, she loved Chanel perfume. In fact, it was her little bit of indulgence is what she's telling me that she would spend a lot of money on this because I, I know how much it is too. And how, and how much she enjoyed those small things in life. I know that she passed with cancer and she didn't do anything about it for, for a very long time, which meant that she only had a few, once it was diagnosed, it was only a few weeks before she passed. I know also the one thing I do get from her though, um, very strongly, is how she was a very wise woman. She spoke well, she was intelligent, she still is. She's very intelligent and she's bright and she's got a lot to say, but she comes across as a woman who's very balanced in her outlook. Does anyone understand that please? A lady who, uh, she only looks to me in her late fifties, early sixties, that's all. Janice. Um... Okay. Um, Janice, can I? Yeah, thank you. Um, I could, and Chanel was her thing, and she's, I actually have carried on the tradition of Chanel. When thank I can you. Get it. <laughs> the only thing is the age, she was much older. Yes, she That's let fine. the cancer go, didn't say anything about it, and died. That's fine. Very I knew that I, I probably, I knew actually there was a feeling I'd got her age wrong, but I think I was seeing it at a time that she considered to be the peak of her life which is in her late 50s, early 60s. What do you mean the peak of her life? When, when, she, felt, when she felt the life was really good, you know, when she was, um, you know, um, bright and mentally and physically and things were going her way. Yes, I agree with that. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's why she's showing a, 
to me at the best time of her life, really, in her in her view, you know. I feel also that um, the one thing is that there's this incredible bond. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Not every daughter has a great bond with their mother, but she's talking to me about you and that there's this wonderful bond between you, almost in separateness, if that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Okay, because she she always knew you would be there. Whatever she went through, whatever you went through, you would be there for each other, is what she's saying. Yes. Okay, and she talks about the importance of the written word and that she loved to read and she liked to write. Yes. And I know that she's got beautiful writing and she would um, take time to write because words vocabulary was very, very important to her to get the right word. Yes, especially when it came to special occasions, birthdays. Okay, that's yes. fine. And, and because she's also talking to me about the Reader's Digest. And oh she, liked, yes. <laughs> she liked to read, it pays to increase your word power. There was yes. a section on vocabulary in that, you know, that she loved. And oh, she's yeah. saying to me that she always tried to come up with different ideas about life, the meaning of life. Yes. It's a bit deeper meaningful, but that's what she said. And she really wants to show you that um, she's here for you because she talks about how you're exploring different avenues for yourself right now. And I'm talking about personal development here. Correct. Okay. And she wants to help you to see that, um, to, uh, and this is her view, please remember that, that she wants you to try to remain open rather than just going down one particular avenue. I get that. That's why oh, I, I totally get what you're saying. That's fine, because I think she's just confirming things. Um, I think she's just confirming things for you. Um, because she's saying to you that she wanted to support your view, which is just to see where life takes you at the moment, rather than pushing in any one particular direction. I understand that, yes. Right, okay. She talks to me about the end of her life, because she says, I can't not talk about that, because she talks about how you were there with her constantly. Yes. She doesn't remember you not being there to be honest, that's what she said to me, you know, that you, every time she opened her eyes, you were there for her. Yeah. And, that, and, and she talks about how she's, your mum was a very strong lady, but she has a very gentle touch. Correct. And she talks about how she stroked your hand at the end of her life. She tried to reach out with her own fingers to stroke your hand. Uh, yes. Okay, and she remembers so well the touch of your skin and how it made her feel at peace, knowing that everything had been said, knowing that there was nothing that she had to think about. She could relax and let go. Completely understand that. I was the last one to hold her hand and I was the one who said it was time for her to go and that, shortly after she passed. Okay. And she's just saying to you, I just wanted you to know how it felt from my perspective. I wanted you to know because you know how it was from yours, but not from hers. And she says, I was just so happy that we had that understanding between us that, and total acceptance. And she knew she was going into a new lease of life. She had very... Um, similar ideas to ours about life after death yes because she didn't regret it about you know she didn't worry about it she wasn't scared she was just waiting her time for the right moment to go i totally agree with that yeah okay I would... and she's here just to say to you you don't need me. This is what she's saying. Oh, really? Because I was just crying to her before I got on church. No, 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 no. You I didn't. No, I didn't finish my sentence. I'm sorry. What? No, 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 no. It's okay. I'm just not going to let you do that to yourself. Because what she said was, you don't need me to tell you how much I love you. That's what she said. Um, and she says, I want you to know 
I'm that close to you, I can still feel the touch of your skin on your hand. Wow, that's amazing. And I, and I want you to, she also says to you, I want you to know there's nothing that you can't achieve that you want to achieve. And it's your time now. Those are her words. So please, please take your mum's love. She's very strong, very mindful lady. She's very considerate. She likes to think about things very deeply. Yes. You no, know, not, there's nothing superficial about your mum. No. You know? And she just wants to say to you, you know, whatever you're going through right now, and she's not going to discuss it because it's personal, but she's saying, whatever you're going through, just remember, I've got your back. And she'd said those words to you before. All the time. Yeah, because she told me that she'd said them before. So please know your mum is so close to you and there's nothing that she won't do to do her best to help you. And try to, and try to feel her strength because she's a very strong lady. Very. That's why I was even okay. talking to her before because yesterday was actually her birthday and every time oh. we're and it plays the wings, the wings beneath my wings, that's like my song to her. Okay, So oh, I was like, she's yeah. coming through today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she also just wanted to say, please, she knows that you recognize the perfume now, not just when she was here, but you no. sometimes get a, a tiny glimpse of that perfume and then you know your mom's with you. Yes. Okay. So please, please take a love. Fabulous lady. And thank you for working with me. Oh, thank you. You have no idea how much I really needed that today. Thank oh, you. That's, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Let's see who else we have here. All right. I'm aware of a gentleman here. I know he's a dad. And he comes across to me as a man who's always laughing. I'm sure he didn't. But that's the feeling I get from him. He's got a great sense of humor. And he liked stupid jokes, you know, what we call Christmas cat cracker jokes. Um, really, one you know, the one-liners and the knock-knock jokes and all of those, you know. Um, he, he was a man who was um, so approachable. Anyone could talk to him. He was the sort that you put him in a supermarket and somehow, somewhere, he'd be talking to somebody. That's the man, very, very sociable easy to get on with I know I'm, I'm asking him how he passed and I, I'm, I know it was a heart condition but I know also that he was quite sick towards the end but he wouldn't let anyone know um, he was worried that he was going to upset his family I do feel that he um had a problem with his right leg at some point because it keeps as I'm feeling him it keeps giving way as though there was a, a, a problem with his knee or something wrong with that leg anyway um, and also he's got an issue with one finger on his right hand does anybody understand this at all a dad who's who loved got a wicked sense of humor lovely sense of humor um Carolyn Okay. Carolyn, do you understand all of this, please? Yeah. Yes, I do. Oh, brilliant. Okay. And do you understand about your dad's, uh, sorry, I, I don't mean this as a put down to your dad in no shape, shape or form, but he had a, what I call a silly sense of humor. Yeah, you know, very, silly. very silly. Yes, very yeah, silly. That's good. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and also that, and there's a problem with his leg and a problem with a finger on his right hand. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, would you also accept that he was that man that everybody would talk to? They just would, he was like, you know, bees to a honeypot. People would just talk to him wherever yeah, he was. He loved to chat with everybody yeah. he met. Yeah. yeah, he could talk to anybody about anything. That's the man, you know. But I feel also that where he lived, he had, he's showing me what we call patio wind, patio doors and um, a decking with um you know um a patio set and all of that with a beautiful garden would that mean anything to you yes he had a garden in the back and you understand the opening of the doors and seeing and seeing the table and chairs out there yes right okay because um the thing he's showing me is that was his piece that's what that's what he loved 
that that's what he that's what he worked for was that view wonderful oh that's nice okay um because he was he wanted to show you that you must have been there very recently yes i was okay and you must have been on in that patio as well because he shows me you looking at that view of his garden that was Yes, definitely. Okay, and he's just showing you that um, he was right next to you. Um, he was, he, but he was a man who always had a cup in his hand. I, I do feel it's tea, not coffee, though. I may be wrong. It doesn't matter. Okay, okay. I, I didn't know that he drank tea. I, I know he drank coffee. Oh, that's my fault. Okay, because okay. I don't, I don't drink tea at all. So I assume everybody else does. I'm okay. sorry about that. Okay. 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 <laughs> So, but I just know he's always got a cup in his hand. You know, it's always like the kettle's on, you know. And um, and I know he wanted to show you today how close he is to you because he talks about nature as being something that's very, very important to him. That he would have to, even though he's a, a very sociable man, he would need his own space where he would go wandering off somewhere. Yes, it's very true. Okay. And he, he talks to me about where he lives because he's, and he says that where I lived was a particularly pretty area, somewhere where I could get lost in the trees. Yes, yes. There and, is. And, and he says that he just loved to go for short walks. No, he's not a hiker. That's not your dad. But I, <laughs> but I know that but one of his joys, one of his many joys, and he's got ever so many interests, he says is he loved to be with children. Yes, that's very especially true. Especially those he could communicate with, you know, where um, he could play silly guard, uh, card games and little tricks and things like that. That was your dad. Yes. You know, and he wasn't, it wasn't above him to get on the floor with children and let them jump all over him and that sort of thing, you know, that's yes, what yes. he's saying. Yes. And he talks about you and his relationship with you. And he says that he always felt that there were at the times when we, we all go through this, but he's saying about, about you, he says you, there were times when he felt that you could do with cheering up. And he's saying that's something he's been thinking about recently. Okay. Yes. You understand that? Yes. So, I do. Uh, because he says to you, I, I'm, I'm doing my very best from my side of life. But what he's suggesting, and please remember that you don't have to do anything. This is just a suggestion from your dad. is just to sit in a nice spot and just allow the, 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 the power of nature to touch you and lift you. And he says, and use the colours around you because your dad did. Do okay, you know that? Well, yes. And you I know, really he, he was very much aware of... The, the colors in nature and he would use them to help him when to, yeah, yeah. to lift his spirit if you like and he's saying the same about you and he says to you I want you to know how close I am to you and he talks about the fact that you and your dad have got this lovely relationship where you could talk about anything to each other yes and he he really loved that feeling that there were no holds barred if he didn't like something if you didn't like something you could talk about it openly without offending each other yes true, true. and he said to you it's a pity you can't have that relationship with anyone else now okay i understand yes you do uh -huh. okay because he's talking about your life at the moment where you would like to say some certain things to somebody but you feel you can't. Okay, yes. You understand that? Okay, yes. oh yeah, yeah. okay. Um, because he's saying to you, it is a shame and he's, he's trying so hard from his side of life to help you find your peace. That's what he tells you. Okay, thank you. And to, and, and to feel that you're achieving. This is not just about finding peace of mind, but it's feeling sort of self-fulfilled as well. And that's something he's trying to help you with right now. Okay, thank you. And not just looking outside of you, but looking inside of you for that. And he says to you, you don't know how far you come. You don't appreciate how much you do and how much you help other people. And he wants to give you some credit for that. 
because you're not good at giving yourself credit. Okay, okay. All right, I know you can't answer that, but anyway, I, I will say what he's saying to you. And he wants you to know that you are amazing in his eyes. And he said that, I've never, I don't think I've said that to anybody in all the years I've worked, but Thank he you. did just say that to you. You are amazing in his eyes and you can do no wrong because everywhere, everything you do comes from the heart. And he's saying, you know, you just know that this is now a different time of life where you're having to pull from your inner strength to help you, but it's not going to be for long. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a fortune teller, but he said that. He just wants you to know that this is not going to last forever and that there is a light coming to you at the end of your tunnel at the moment. That's what he believes. Thank you. And, thank he, you. and he's saying to you, your dad must have had an interest in the stars. Yes, yes. I, okay, I don't know if it's astrology, but I think he was in, interested in astronomy. Yes, you know? yes. Oh, good, okay. Um, because he talked to me about the stars and he's saying to you, you know, when you can, you know, look at the stars at night and watch them shine and allow yourself to feel the energy that they're giving you. Okay. Yes, I will do and that. They, and they feel, and, and the stars, he says, I don't know anything about this, so I just repeat words. That's my job. But he says the stars feel so far away. But when you connect with them, he says, you'll start to feel just how close they are to you. Well, try it and see. I can't well, answer that. Well, I that's just, beautiful. That's beautiful. Just try it and see. But he really wants to share with you at the moment. And one of the things he's doing, he's, he's showing you that he would have, he's holding your hand, but he's not just, it's weird because I can't do this because I don't know how, I can't see you, but not that I need to, but it's the way he grips your hand. It's like putting your fingers through, I don't know if you can see my hand like that, but putting your hand through there, does that, can you see that? Yes, yes, yes. Right, that's how he would be with you. He would hold your hand in that way. Yes, when I was little. Okay. And he still remembers that. And he's still taking control. In other words, he's leading you. Oh, wonderful. By, Thank by you. By the hand. That's Thank what you. he's saying to you. So just know that your father thinks the world of you. Absolutely thinks the world of you. And, and whatever you're going through, maybe having a bit of a tough time at the moment, it's not forever. Just try to focus on your own strength, your, you know, your core strength. And also know that, your intentions are always honourable. That's what he says. And Thank I believe you. him. Thank I you. Believe what a beautiful him. message. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And I know your dad's love is everlasting. Please take that from him. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you all very much for your support today. Thank you very much, Minister Simone Key. That will bring us to the end of services. We always close our services uh, with a prayer and then a song. So we would invite um, Minister Simone Key to close with prayer. Thank you. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Divine Spirit, Almighty God, as we come to the close of our service today, we give thanks to you for giving us this opportunity to connect with our loved ones, both here and in that world we call the spirit world. We thank those who've come through to us today. And even though not many people can get a contact from their loved ones in mediumship today, we know that every single individual here is in contact with their loved ones for eternity. We know that together we can make a difference. We know too that we can be together in your power and through your power can help one another through support, encouragement, and just pure help. We thank you for all that you give us in our daily lives. And we pray for all those that need your help more than ever before. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Simone, for being with us today, for taking the time. Very welcome. It's been a joy. Thank you.
Thank you. We'll just go into a closing uh, song. Uh, have a wonderful day, everyone. We're so glad you came to be in community with us today. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Blessings, Simone. <laughs>